Elon's low-quality live stream that seemingly showed a new version of full self-driving that did a few things better and a few things worse than current versions will go down in history as a major milestone and a turning point in the world of self-driving cars and artificial intelligence, and I'm going to do my best to explain to you why. First, I must reiterate that the quality of this video isn't going to quite be what you're used to on this channel because of it being live-streamed from a handheld phone, which can be pretty difficult to watch at times. Yeah, I, th I think it, like these th th videos like this are maybe more interesting if they're edited and uh, sped up. Don't worry, Elon. I got you covered on that front. And by the way, if you ever want to do this kind of thing again and improve the quality by an order of magnitude, I might know a guy who has a little experience with filming full self-driving videos in a Model S, so let me know. Let's get straight into it. The reason this version is such a big deal and what you're seeing here is truly incredible is that the car is no longer using the 300,000 lines of human written code that it used to rely on to drive and instead it's been replaced with a much more simple AI that learns to drive exclusively from video clips. In layman's terms, this means humans no longer manually program the software or even have any ability to tell it how to behave in certain situations, and instead they show the car a massive amount of video clips of real-world driving, which it then tries to mimic. What's truly amazing here, and hard for people to wrap their heads around, is that the car has never been told what lane lines are. No one told it to stop at stop signs or stop lights or even how to navigate construction zones, none of that. It just remembers seeing this kind of situation before and is doing it how it thinks it should be done. This means that, for better or worse, the car is behaving more human-like than ever before, which has some funny side effects, like it no longer coming to a complete stop at stop signs. According to Ashok, the head honcho of the autopilot team who was sitting passenger during this drive, their data shows that humans come to a full stop at stop signs less than 0.5% of the time, and since they can't explicitly program the car to fully stop at stop signs anymore, they have to try to fix it by using more clips of humans coming to full stops, which is data that's hard to find. I think that instead of the NHTSA forcing Tesla to comply with a law that humans obey less than 1% of the time, should probably instead be seen as a signal that there is something seriously wrong with our road networks and our overuse of stop signs here in the States. But it won't be. It doesn't seem to respect the stop lines painted on the ground either. Here you can see it basically just ignore it and instead pulls up to where it has good visibility of incoming traffic from both ways before proceeding, exactly how human drivers do it. And as much as a lot of people don't want to hear this, I think this approach is the only solution to self-driving cars sharing their roads with humans without getting completely bullied on the road. And speaking of laws that the vast majority of humans break, let's talk about speeding. As you notice from the clips, the set speed of the car is 85 miles an hour the entire time, which surprised me because if you do that with current versions of the beta, the car would definitely be trying to get to 85 miles an hour the entire time. But yet, version 12 keeps right around the speed limit and goes the speed it thinks is appropriate for the road it's on and surrounding traffic. Keep in mind, it has no idea what a speed limit sign even is, and there is no programming that explicitly tells the car to obey it. This also means that there's no need to program the car to slow down in adverse weather conditions like rain or snow, or to take extra caution if there's a lot of pedestrians around. The car will just intuitively go slower and be more cautious because that's how it's seen it done. There was another pretty incredible move that I think largely went unnoticed during this drive. Maybe a little hard to see, but there's traffic building up beyond the intersection ahead and it starts to get blocked. Instead of blindly moving into the intersection like the car in front of us does, it stays put like a good attentive driver that's paying attention to the situation. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me that it's just doing this stuff without any real programming, just mimicking what it's seen done before. Another new ability that learning from real-world video clips gives it is that it can now pull off to the side of the road and park itself when it gets close to the end of its navigation route. Ashok mentioned they'd be able to take voice cues from passengers as well, like asking the car to pull over immediately, which is very important for a robo-taxi. It also appears to vary its following distance based on the situation, like here where it's the last car in a turning lane and gets closer than usual to the car in front so that it's not obstructing traffic behind. Coming up here is a very challenging scenario with the cyclist that I think is also very revealing. As the light turns green, it makes room for the cyclist, but as soon as the car is about parallel with them, an oncoming car appears. Now the car has a decision to make here. Does it brake hard, which could potentially make things a little awkward for the cyclist and be uncomfortable for the passengers, or does it accelerate into the gap to clear it? In the end, the car chooses to accelerate and clear the gap, which some people might argue was the wrong move, but I think was appropriate given the situation. 
I do want to move on from talking about the clips and get a little bit more into some of the technical details that were discussed between Elon and Ashok about this. But before I do, I want you to just watch and truly let it sink in how freaking amazing this is. The car is driving like a human, exactly how a human would be doing it, using its cameras and neural network, the equivalent to our eyes and brain. The smoothness is something you probably have to be in the car yourself to really feel, but even from just these clips, you can just see how confident it is in areas that used to trip it up before, like this construction zone. Current versions of FSD do avoid cones, but it's always seeming to search for a way back into its lane, which feels robotic and is definitely something you feel inside the car. Compare that to this clip where it goes through smooth as silk and even as the construction zone ends, it literally ignores all the ground markings on the road because it has a left turn coming up shortly and there's no other traffic around. This is definitely some human behavior if I have ever seen it. If Tesla gets to the point where they can make this car drive significantly safer than the average human and yet it's still technically breaking laws, some really difficult questions are going to have to be asked about not only our laws but also what we think of as self-driving cars. For example, I personally would not feel safe if a car was limited to the exact speed limit on the highway. If you're going 65 while traffic around you is flowing at 75 or 80, you are not only a nuisance but a danger on the road and you are more likely to get involved in an accident when humans are doing crazy stuff to get around you. But as good as all this looks to me and as excited as I am to try it out, it's still not ready. Shortly after the clip I showed you of the car not entering the intersection that was blocked, it seemed to get confused about which stoplight to look at and nearly ran a red light, forcing a disengagement. AI can be weird sometimes, as you'll know if you've ever watched those videos on YouTube about AI trying to learn to do anything, and more high quality data is needed to fix stuff like this. Luckily, Tesla has more data than anyone else, and you probably can't even see second place with a telescope. I know I said no more clips, but this is what videos without a real script look like, I'm sorry. As we watch version 12 snake its way through the parking lot to its last destination of the drive, let's go over some of the most interesting stuff that was said between Elon and Ashok in the car. The first is that this was a hardware three car running at 100 watts. And not only is version 12 vastly more efficient than the current beta, it's actually limited to the camera's frame rate of 36 FPS. But Elon mentioned that back of the napkin mask says that it can run on hardware three up to 50 frames a second. So if you're worried about being left behind because of the processing power of hardware three i hope this somewhat puts your fears to rest next is that version 12 will be when actually smart summon releases and the pretty rough version of summon that we have now will be replaced with a truly smart one that drives like you're seeing it do right now through this parking lot and if there's no map of the parking lot don't worry because he also mentions it's capable of running completely offline with no map at all Elon gave an example of telling the car to drive to a building off in the distance with no map or data connection available, and the car will attempt to get there, even making wrong turns and perhaps needing to reverse back down a street and turn around to figure out a way to, to do it. He also mentions the car is capable of obeying signs without actually understanding how to read at all. Time will tell how true this statement is and how important it ends up being, but after seeing the current performance before Dojo even comes online, I can see how the approach could potentially work. Traditional code like C++ and Python are still being used to control what data goes into the model so they can control more how it behaves. You don't want to give it data from bad drivers, and they have handwritten code that curates the data and then humans who review the clips before adding them to the model. The system can continually train itself with what Elon calls a rapid virtuous cycle, when, when there's a disengagement like the one we saw at the red light, it's automatically submitted for the training process and then updates the weights of the neural network. Something else I thought was interesting was that after the disengagement, Ashok mentioned that the stoplight regression was specifically on the Model S, which makes me think that there are either different models for every model of the vehicle or they're testing different models on different versions of the vehicle, but I'm not sure. And lastly, and unfortunately for me and some others who recently upgraded their car to a new model, it appears, at least for the time being, that version 12 is not running on hardware 4 yet and may need its own entire data set to function properly. And since they seem to be training constrained and with the vast majority of the fleet still being on hardware 3, I think they're probably going to prioritize that a little bit more. But this is just my assumption. I have no real proof and I have my fingers crossed that hardware 4 will get it at the same time. In closing, I want to say that I'm really excited to see the direction Autopilot's going. 
If the goal is to be as safe as possible without pissing off the humans around you, I feel like this is the way forward that no one thought was possible, but somehow we just saw that it is. I didn't even touch on Optimus in this video, but just imagine the possibilities with it running the same full self-driving computer. Thank you for watching, especially if you've made it all the way to the end, I truly thank you. Please let me know what you thought by liking or disliking the video, or letting me know what you think in the comments so I can know whether to keep making videos like this or stick to what I was doing before. Thanks again for watching everybody, and until next time.